There seems to be a great deal of confusion as to precisely what fascism is. A lot of people are having the accusation fired at them, the label fired at them, erroneously, and I decided to do a video explaining precisely what it is. On the one hand, we have Trump elected as President of the United States of America. Many people are calling him a fascist. This is incorrect. On the other hand, on the ground, we have a variety of far-right groups across the Western world rising to prominence. Now, people who fly swastika flags and give Hitler salutes and come out with anti-Semitic and neo-Nazi rhetoric can justifiably be called neo-Nazis and fascists. However, and this is quite important, in a major sense, it isn't about them. And this might sound surprising, but stay with me. And in another sense, it isn't about the variety of right-wing populists and far-right groups that have been elected across the Western world, America and in Europe. Trump in America, Alternative for Deutschland in Germany and Marie Le Pen in France. In another sense, it isn't about them either. And I know this will surprise some people too, but bear with me. Fascism is one thing and one thing alone, and it is a path. It is a path from A to B, and nothing more. It is a method to get from point A to point B. Point A, on the ground, not in a position of power, to point B, in a position of power. And what determines and characterises fascism as fascism is that path. Fascism is a particular method of attaining state power. And it sets out to do a number of things. One of the primary things that it sets out to do is to destroy the organisations of the working class. Its unions, its left groups, its socialist organisers, its community activists. It smashes them and removes them completely off of the stage. It does this by building a mass movement which is antagonistic to left groups and the left wing. And it atomises it by turning the population and that mass movement against the forces and the organisations of the left. President Trump was an elected president following the normal democratic procedures that exist in the United States of America. He didn't follow the fascist path, therefore he isn't a fascist. The state exists, the United States governmental state and the capitalist state still exists in its normal structures above and around Trump. It's not a fascist state. The organisations within America, such as unions and left groups and socialists and community activists and community organisers, still exist. In fact, there is a popular movement against Trump. If Trump was a fascist, that wouldn't be allowed. It would have been stopped. And in fact, the very path of fascism, its main objective is to smash those very things which it hasn't done. Therefore, he isn't a fascist. It's not a fascist state, and it is wrong to call it fascist. Now, there are a number of developments taking place, which are very interesting. On the one hand, we have the far-right groups, the fascists proper, who are going around, coming out with anti-Semitic rhetoric, racist hate, flying swastika flags, Organisations like National Action, the National Front, various other small groups, both here in Britain, across Europe and in America. On the other hand, these people are combated directly on the street by Antifa. The problem is, 
and this is where it gets interesting. The broad population are seeing both groups as bad as each other, attacking each other like animals, beating each other up, violence, intimidation, Antifa smashing up campuses, shutting down anybody who disagrees with them, stopping anybody from having the right to speak, such as Milo, and calling Milo fascist and other people who aren't fascists. Milo is in fact a right-wing troll. Now the far right and the populist right are outmaneuvering us as a consequence of this. There was a battle in ancient Rome, the Battle of Cannae in 216 BC against the Romans on the one hand and Hannibal and the Carthaginians on the other. And they pulled an amazing trick. It's considered to be one of the greatest military victories in the history of humanity. And on the part of the Romans, one of the greatest defeats in military history. It's still taught in military academies across the world, including West Point in the United States of America. And what they did was this. As the Roman forces were attacking, the Carthaginians pulled back, giving the illusion to the Romans that they were in a position of defeat and they were being routed. With encouragement, they drew forward. But Hannibal pulled a masterstroke. He had reserve troops hidden behind, out of vision of the front lines. As the Romans moved in, he encircled them by moving his rear troops in a pincer movement. He surrounded the Romans, he massively outnumbered him. In fact, the Carthaginian forces were 50,000 and the Roman forces were 86,000. And they chopped them to pieces where they were standing. And that was the end of that. Now, why this is important is that there is a significantly developing movement which is using very clever and intelligent tactics and it is distancing itself from both Antifa and what it is seeing as the far left and the neo-Nazis. It is calling both of them out. It is coming out of a new and sophisticated form of communication. On social media, it is massive, intelligent, imaginative and creative. There is a combination of conservative millennials, the Tommy Robinson show, rebel media, Sargon of Assad, Sargon of Akkad, excuse me, the Rubin Report, intertwined with movements such as the FLA, the recent movement in the United Kingdom. They are creating incredibly interesting social media content. They are prepared to discuss questions which the left are not allowing people to have or are they are ignoring because they're deemed to be too controversial. About SGWs, about identity politics, about the obsession with transgender issues and third with feminism. These individuals, these groups on social media, particularly on YouTube, have created a movement and there is a cross pollinization of ideas and communication. The Rubin Report and Sargon of Akkad have both interviewed Tommy Robinson. All three of these people have enormous audiences. The conservative millennials have enormous audiences they're also interviewed by Sargon of Akkad and by the Rubin Report. The FLA are in touch with Tommy Robinson and now they are open to the same discussions and criticisms of the left produced by such people as Sargon and Rubin. Rebel Media has an audience of 860,000 people. The Rubin Report 
has an audience of 555,000 people. Sargon of Akkad has an audience subscription numbers of 725,000. If you compare this to the Socialist Party, just over 2,000 subscribers, the SWP, 4,000 subscribers, the Labour Party itself, 24,000 subscribers, and Momentum with a mere 1,532 subscribers. We're massively outnumbered. Now, some people have pointed out that that is in, in and of itself a mass movement. But you wouldn't say that about the BBC or The Guardian or CNN or The Independent or BBC News or Channel 4 News. The alternative media which these people are creating is incredibly creative, incredibly diverse, incredibly engaging and isn't afraid of discussing awkward questions. It is seeing the left as being authoritarian and violent Refusing to address issues of immigration and Islam. And as a consequence of that, the moral field has been left completely open. And these people rejecting the stereotypical ideas and rhetoric of the far right, a combination of classical liberals rebel millennial conservatives, particularly in America, and the populist right, rebel media and Tommy Robinson, etc., can now take the moral high ground. They no longer have to discuss things in fascistic ways. And to call these people fascists is simply counterproductive. They can talk about Islam. They can talk about immigration. They can talk about SJWs. They can talk about identity politics and its backwardness. They can talk about the backwardness of third wave feminism. They can talk about the ridiculousness of pushing single issues as if they're the most important issues of all and refusing any criticism and jumping down people's throats, throwing the fascism label around and shutting free speech down and not allowing people to have rational criticisms of these things. They're taking the moral high ground. They're creating a new system of dialogue with energy and creativity and originality, which is absolutely taking the movement by storm and making us look quite ridiculous. They can throw the far right into that. They can throw Antifa into that. And they're doing the same canai manoeuvre and wiping us out. Now the dangerous thing is that threaded through this movement we do have the beginnings indeed of populist, conservative and right-wing organisations. They are creating a movement and within this growing movement, the left is beginning to be seen as the enemy. Because of the SJWs, because of the third wave feminists, because of the identity politics. We're losing the moral high ground. Issues of class are removed and talked about with a ridiculously low level of frequency. Now, in order for fascism to become fascism, there has to be certain prerequisites. The state, the ruling of class, the elites, the capitalist system itself, its government and its police and its army have to be in a state of crisis before any truly revolutionary situation can take place. When there is a split in the ruling class because the situation is becoming so 
desperate that they splinter and can no longer hold on to the situation or control it or control the organs of their own state apparatus, then movements, whether of the right or the left or the far right or the radical left, have a position to strengthen themselves and partic even particularly take power or to begin at least to move in that direction. Now, when this happens, certain sections of the ruling class will divide and make new alliances. Now, could it be that the people who do this are Le Pen, the alternative for Deutschland, and Trump? It certainly is. It certainly is a possibility at some point in the future. A splintered ruling class, whether it's with Trump or not with Trump, will begin to make alliances, particularly as a left wing is beginning to gain power. The unions and the left groups, the socialists, community organisers and radicals, etc. When they begin to get strong and influential, a splintered ruling class will panic, make new alliances and begin to develop new formations. There is a possibility that at some stage in the future, you will have a mass movement, a mass populist movement, which is seeing the left as the enemy because of the tactics of Antifa. It will alienate itself from the far right and distinguish itself from them and see them as the enemy also. And it will also call out the SJWs, the feminists, the people championing trans issues, the batshit SJWs, it will lump them all in, to, in the same group, and re want them removing. It will gain support because they're becoming increasingly unpopular, but in the process, the real forces of the left will also be seen as the enemy, and they will be dealt with too. This is where things can get tricky and develop in a fascistic direction. But it doesn't need to use extreme right rhetoric. It doesn't need to be racist. It doesn't need to be anti-Semitic. It doesn't need to have swastikas or fascist salutes to carry out the necessary job of fascism, which again is merely a methodology of moving from A to B in a very specific way. What you end up with is irrelevant. What you start off with is irrelevant. Fascism is merely that path, that method. That's why a lot of these people who've been called fascist aren't fascists. It would be wrong to call Tommy Robinson a fascist. What he is and what he will develop into is unknown. It might be somebody like Tommy Robinson who plays a key role in a development in the future, or it might be somebody else. There are many working class people in the Football Lads Alliance who are justifiably concerned about immigration and about Islam, and they're not allowed to have those issues raised. So they're taken to the streets to have them raised. Everything is in a confusing state of flux. But when we're going around shutting people down and accusing everybody as being neo-Nazis, it's counterproductive and often incorrect completely. Now, as the left becomes stronger, working class issues, those issues that it's always been about, anti-capitalism, there will be a fearful backlash against that, by that fractured ruling elite. They will do whatever they feel they need to do 
to defend themselves against the rising powerful left because it has always been the left, the socialists and the organisers, the unions that have the ability to overthrow and replace capitalism with something far more democratic, something far more inclusive and something far more empowering to ordinary working class people. They will do whatever they have to do in order to stop that, including allowing the development of a counter-mass movement. Now, a mass movement of the populist right singularly wouldn't be able to take full state control because it rests on unorganised working class people who have no links to the left and no links to unions, middle class people, even though they may well be from working class backgrounds, and fractured and alienated sections of the radical conservative population. You will have an unholy alliance between those people, the fractured sections of the ruling elite, to create a mass movement using popular issues of concern, such as Islam and immigration, to build a mass movement that is capable of smashing apart the organs of the organised left, which are becoming more powerful. Now, when there is a lot of criticism aimed towards the left, it isn't about massed people smashing up Starbucks on university campuses. It isn't about social justice warriors and identity politics. It's about one thing and one thing alone, and it's always been about that. The left and the Labour Party in this country formed at the beginning of the last century. What did it do? It gave parliamentary representation for the first time in history in this country to working class men. The, it got the very first working class man elected as an MP in this country. That's what it did. It has nothing to do with gulags and it has nothing to do with mass Stalinist death squads. It has consistently increased wages. It gave votes to working class men. It gave votes to working class women. It was the suffragettes, but later the suffragists, particularly the match striking, the match working girls who went on strike, particularly in London, joined the union linked to the Labour Party, campaigned, and eventually got the vote for working-class women. It was an increase in democracy and representation for working-class people. After World War II, a strong unionised working class demanded a better life. The powers that be realised they had no choice to do that. A radical Labour government came in, which gave us the welfare system, social housing, and the National Health Service. This has nothing to do with gulags or Stalinist dictatorships or death squads or the mass death of peasants in the Soviet Union. It is because we are the only people who are capable of challenging the capitalist system, challenging the rich elites, challenging a corrupt capitalist system and the state understands completely and clearly that that is the case. And just like in Germany in the 30s, and just like in Italy, and just like in Spain, fascism can, and if necessary, will be used as a battering ram to create a counter mass movement to destroy those very things when we are in a strengthened position on one where we have the opportunity to take power or increase our power with some significance. So when you have on the one hand national unity and rebirth, an outside threat, whether it's immigrants or whether it's Jews or whether it's Muslims, a united people, it was called the Deutsche Volk in Germany, and now there is talk about it. it isn't about working class people, it's not about middle class people and it's not about rich people, 
but it's about all of us fighting against common interests. That's incorrect. It's about working class people coming together, as they've done historically, against the system of the rich. The rich will trick you and sell you out when you use this system. They see the left as an enemy and they create a mess, the people's movement. And there is the slow arresting and suspension of democracy. When you have this bundle, you bring it together, be careful what you wish for. Because you might just get it.